Have a good day. Good morning, and welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ on this Reformation Sunday when we remember the work of Martin Luther, Ulrich Zwingli, uh, Caspar Levianus, uh, Zacharias Ursinus, and others uh, who to this very day. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. We come to worship God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, to worship God the Son, Jesus the Christ, who abolished death and to light through the gospel. We come to worship God the Spirit, the Advocate, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, to Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be blessing and honor Glory and power forever and ever. Our first one, a mighty fortress is our God. For 
are still our ancient his craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal did we in our own strength confide our striving would be not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dust as who that may be, Christ be, Lord Sabbath his name, from age to age. And he must win the battle. And the devil's filled should threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God has willed his truth to us. The Prince of Darkness grim, we his rage we can endure, for lo, his do one little word shall fail him. That word above all earthly parts. No abideth. The Spirit and the gifts are through Him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go. This mortal life also. The body they may kill. God's truth, his kingdom is forever. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with heart unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. And we use devices that have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, spare thou those, O God, who confess their sins. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hearken now, comforting assurance of the grace of God. Promise leave. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. God so loved the world that he gave his only be should not perish but have everlasting life. Unto as many of us, therefore, beloved sisters and brothers, as truly repent of our sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with full purpose of new obedience, I announce and declare by the authority and in the name of Christ, according to his promise in the God. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. To the Father, 
and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen Amen Let us pray Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, the 34th chapter, beginning with the first verse. This, for this lectionary year, this ends the uh, the Moses cycle of readings. Uh, this is the this is the last we will be reading of Moses. The remaining Old Testament readings will be about Joshua uh, and and others after Moses. So this is this is uh, the end of the Mo- of the Moses stories. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead, as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I have let you see it, with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in, in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired in his... The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, put his hand on him, and the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders in the land, and all his servants in his entire land, and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed. And this psalm is ascribed to Moses. Lord, we will read, and we will read responsively. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back a thousand years are, are like yet are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like in the morning, in the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before, pass away under your wrath, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80, if we are strong, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as pain. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so and be glad. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your power to their children. God, be upon us, and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Our first New Testament reading is from Paul's first letter to the church at Thessalonica, the You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully maltreated at Philippi, as you know, 
we had declared to you the gospel of God in spite of For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God, by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though as, as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. And finally, our gospel reading this morning, we're continuing in Matthew's gospel, 22nd chapter, beginning with the 34th verse. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord? The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemy. If David thus, thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him, dare to ask him more questions. Here end our scripture readings for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word. And we will continue with hymn number 277. Hymn number 277. Our first hymn was written by the reformer Martin Luther. Uh, this uh, from the... Uh, from whose thought the Lutheran hymn is written by John Calvin, uh, whose writings inspired the pres inspired the. Uh strength 
we have a more and Please join me in saying what we believe in the word. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to a time of prayer, uh, virus, um, also uh, a prayer of thanksgiving. My uh, Palestinian refugee friend Peter uh, was granted permanent uh, so uh, and, and he, he, he is a happy man. Um, our oldest member, uh, Margaret Stone, uh, Mar uh, I, I talked to Margaret's daughter yesterday. Margaret is doing well. Uh, she had suffered from uh, and, and, and so I just, just wanted to uh, bring, bring grief. Also, I uh, want to uh, pray for the repose of the soul of a, a, a wonderful friend of our congregation, uh, Nancy Ford. Uh, she was not a member, uh, but the To Live Again group that met at this church so was a regular, both uh, donating items for our auctions and attending our auctions. Uh, she, uh, she really, uh, she loved, she, I got a, a note from the family that she passed away in late August. Uh, for uh, Nancy's family, uh, for, for God to comfort them in their time of grief. Uh, we also want to pray for the uh, country of Armenia. Armenia, uh, they are, uh, a portion of that country is under attack by a neighboring, that's about the best I can do pronouncing it, probably not quite right. Uh, Armenia uh, has... Uh, has has experienced a history of persecution uh, even before the uh, the Holocaust of the 1940s. 1.5 million Armenians were uh, killed in the genocide uh, by uh, by Turkey. Still, t there are tensions between those countries uh, to this day, and now Armenia is finding themselves under attack again. Um, Armenia is almost is almost entirely. Uh, Christian, one of the old world. Uh, so please, and we had one of our neighbor, one of our sister UCC congregations is Christ. Uh, they they are a congregate, an old congregational church. They are, uh, I should say, a long time congregational church. They are located in in Havertania and 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 pray for those Armenians living in our country, especially our sister congregation, our Armenian. Barters Congregational United Church of Christ. Um, if there are any other prayers, please, please text them. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for your great with Moses all, all, all in, during all the days he, he led his people to free. Thank you for journeying with us through this past week and through these through this difficult year that we are going through and are still going through, we thank you for that you from you when we are unfaithful, that you are still faithful to us and you still love us even, even when we are unfaithful and you constantly recall us to faithfulness. Pray for those who have passed from this life, especially we pray for our dear friend and our sister uh, Nancy Ford. Lord and light perpetual shine upon her. Be with her family, uh, be with her friends, those in Bridesburg who remember Nancy. Uh, be with all whose lives were blessed by Nancy's. And we in them, O oh Lord, and light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for the Armenian, we pray for the country of Armenia, and we pray for the Armenian uh, diaspora community in many countries, including our own. Uh, we lift up our, con our sister congregation, Armenian Martyrs, uh, Congreg Congregational United Church of Christ in Havertown, that you would grant safety, bring peace, bring an end, bring an end to this conflict, uh, that you would restore peace to the people.
people of Armenia who have suffered through so much. We pray for those struggling with illness of body or mind, uh, Brother Allen, as he recovers from the virus. We pray that you would grant him a full recovery and a rapid recovery with no, with no. We continue to pray for Carmela, uh, that you would give her strength and for Al, who cares for her, uh, for Eric, uh, for Eric, uh, for many, for many others on our prayer list and for many others known in our hearts. We pray for those in times of tra in, in transition. And so again, we, placed by, we pray for the homeless, those of our congregation, and those of our city, that you would provide for them and protect them. We pray for the veterans, that you would heal the wounds of war in their bodies, minds, and spirits. We pray for violence and of child abuse. We pray for our sisters, Millie and Dorothy and Nancy. In our hearts, may we pray in silence. We pray, Lord, for an end to this pandemic. We pray your guidance on all those who are working to combat it. And we pray and we pray for all who are working with the public uh, during this hazardous time. We pray for those in authority over our country, our commonwealth, and our city, that you would guide them to make decisions term good of the people and not for short-term political gain. We pray for the world, especially Armenia, peace in this divided country, peace in Philadelphia, peace in Bridesburg. We pray for all the churches in Bridesburg, especially those of the Bridesburg Council, as we seek to share your love and meet the needs of your people. Most especially, Lord, do Christ, sustain us, encourage us, and enable us. May all that we say and do be to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, announcements. Uh, we have a few um, in the bulletin. There's a note about the hymns this morning. Again, our first were written by leaders of the Sunday. Um, we, uh, Emmanuel uh, Church will hold our homeless outreach next Saturday, next Saturday, uh, October 31st at 10 a.m. Uh, please meet at the church. Any questions, uh, please contact Sean or Carol. Uh, there is a meeting of the Philadelphia Association of the United Church of Christ this, after, this, this afternoon uh, at 3 p.m. via Zoom. Um, if anybody uh, wants to tune in, let me know. I'll forward the, I'll forward the sign on information. Uh, <clears throat> next Sunday is daylight savings time. Uh, all clocks go back an hour. Um, also, next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, uh, Totenfest, and our in the German Reformed tradition. Um, and we will remember those of our congregation who have pass passed. Uh, if there are any names of loved ones you would like to have remembered, uh, please uh, send them to me and, and I will include them. And the Pennsylvania South thing on Sunday, uh, uh, November, I think that's actually November 15th, uh, that's a typo, November 15th, it's a Sunday from three to five again via Zoom, uh, and, there, and there's uh, re registration information in the bulletin. Uh, please, uh, 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 please uh, keep keep these amount announcements. So uh, the, uh, you may have noticed as in my walk in, uh, something was missing. The tree was missing. Uh, the tree in front of our church was cut down uh, on Tuesday this week. Uh, it had grown to a point where it was a hazard both to the power lines and to, uh, neighbor, and to neighboring property. And so, and so the, the tree in front of the church was cut down. Um, we will continue with our next hymn, number 399. <laughs> Once to a nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood evil side. Some great cause God's new. 
Messiah, offering each the bloom or blight, voice goes by forever, twixt that darkness and that light. By the light of martyrs, Jesus bleeding feet I track, toiling up to Calvary with the cross. New occasions teach new duties, time makes it smooth, they must Rest of truth, the cause of evil. That is truth alone is strong. Truth forever on the sky, forever on. Yet that scaffold sway. The future and beyond standeth in the shadow, keeping watch above his own. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts. Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know that last Saturday, not yesterday, but Saturday a week ago, I took my annual hike, an observation point along the Appalachian Trail near Hamburg, where I grew up on the northern tip of Berks County. It's a hike I often made with my father when I was growing up. And indeed, when I make my annual pilgrimage, I always visit my father's grave part of the family plot that also includes my paternal grandparents and great-grandparents, and then head for the mountains to hit the trail. Last year, because my left knee was crumbling and falling apart, uh, I wasn't able to make the hike, and indeed at that time was unable to walk much of anywhere without the help of a cane and later crutches. But this year, equipped with a shiny new replacement knee, and in the color of the leaves, we're spectacular, and I on our on on our Facebook page and our Facebook group uh, a few a few photos from the top from the top of the mountain. The pinnacle is a rock ledge, probably rocks deposited during movement of glaciers during the ice age, from which you can look out and see a panoramic view of the landscape of the valley below. Much of it is farmland, and from a distance, the different plots of farmland look like a patchwork quilt of greens and browns and embroidered at various points with borders of trees. It's one of my favorite views, one of my favorite views, a view to which since, my, since childhood I've returned again and again and probably will continue to return as long as I'm able to do it. Every year the hike, every year the hike takes a little longer, every year I'm a little more out of breath Every year, I wonder if this will be my last year up there, and every next year, economy reminded me of that hike a week or so ago. For me, it's a, it's a bittersweet passage indeed, perhaps one of the saddest, most moving passages in the Old Testament. Moses, the great man of God, had led his people from slavery in Egypt through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. For his trouble, he had had to deal with threats in his life from faith. He had to deal with constant attacks on his leadership from his people, and at least once even had to talk God himself down from the idea of destroying the people and starting over with Moses' descendants. We're told that Moses was before God. When the people were yet again complaining of thirst, God told Moses to speak, Moses and Aaron, to speak to a certain rock. Moses, in his impatience with the people, struck the rock, as God, had instruct, as God had told him to do on earlier occasions. But this, this time God had told him to speak to the rock and not strike it. 
Water did come forth from the rock, but God told Moses that because he had not followed the instruction to speak to the rock and had thus dishonored God before the people, he would not be allowed to enter the promised land. It reads, it reads as a harsh punishment indeed for what seems like a small violation of instructions done in an understandable moment of anger. We're told that Moses pleaded with God to relent, but God held to his word, decreeing that it would be Joshua and not Moses who would lead, lead the people. And today's reading describes that moment of transition. Moses had previously laid hands on Joshua, commissioning Joshua to lead God's blessing upon Joshua. Moses would not be able to enter the land, but God commanded Moses to climb Mount Nebo, and from that vantage point, God showed Moses a panorama of the entire land of promise, all the land that God, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants. Perhaps it, too, took on the appearance in Moses' eye of a great patchwork quilt of possibility laid out before him, similar to how I view, saw the view from the pinnacle. And then we're told, having seen the vision of the promised land, Moses died at God's command and was buried in the land of Moab, outside the promised land. And finished 30 days of mourning for Moses, Joshua would be the one to lead the people into the promised land. It's a bittersweet thing to be able to envision a better future, a promised land of the Spirit, but not experience it. It's the experience of all who are involved in movements for change, be it movements to overcome human or scientific inquiries to better understand the natural world or the human body. Before change can happen, a great deal of ignorance and inertia has to be overcome. And to overcome this ignorance and inertia may be the work of a lifetime or the work of many lifetimes, the work of multiple generations. Oppressed African what a society without slavery, without discrimination, a, so a society in which they were free might look like, but many lived and died seeing only a glimpse, if that, of the, of the world toward which they strived, and barriers remain to this day. Scientists envisioned a world <coughs> without smallpox, a world in which children would no longer be crippled by polio or years of research to bring such a world about, and with reluctance for vaccination, that, that world may even be slipping away in some ways. Many have envisioned a world without, but we are not there yet, and in, in, in to be moving in the opposite direction. And often we do not know the effect of our actions, which we do not know which seemingly small or random act may end up changing the course of history. In the Protestant Church, today is Reformation Sunday, when we remember a list of 95 theses or theological propositions to the door of the Castle Church at Wittenberg. Were he writing today, Luther might use a website or a Facebook page or a blog to propagate his views, but he, of course, he wrote in the early 1500s, and so he had to use the technology available to him. He was one of many reformers of his day questioning the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church of his day. Others were John Calvin, whose views in church, and Ulrich, Zwing Ulrich Zwingli and, and Zacharias Ursinus, among others, whose teachings informed the German Reformed Church into which I was born. And at this point, Reformation Sunday sermons usually descend into Catholic bashing, and that's not where I want to go. It's important to understand that the Reformers did not want to break with the Catholic Church, indulgences, the authority of the Pope, the meaning of the sacraments, the people to Scripture, and various other practices. They hoped their questions around this would create a more faithful Roman Catholic Church, not an ever-expanding collection of separate churches. Now, the, a similar thing happened to the followers of Jesus as faithful Jews but over time found themselves excommunicated from their synagogues and forced to create their own faith communities. But many of the questions raised by the reformers had to do with authority, who's in charge, and when people happen. Christian love, Christian love emphatically did not prevail, as Catholic and Protestant clergy condemned one another to hellfire and damnation, and different Protestant groups likewise condemned one another in the same way, and the Inquisition religious wars ensued. Of course, the original Re Luther and Calvin and Zwingli or Sinus and all did not live to see the full extent to which their writings would change 
the world. Had they foreseen the negative consequences their actions unleashed, the excommunications, would they have taken the same actions? I'll divert for a bit to discuss our own historic theological tradition. Classic Reformed theology came to coalesce around what are known as the five solas, sola being the Latin word for alone. These five are alone, as distinct on papal teaching or church tradition. Sola fide, faith alone, as distinguished from a reliance on works for salvation. Sola gratia, grace alone. Sola Christus, Christ alone, as distinguished from a reliance on priests as intermediaries to God alone. Sola Dei Gratia, a gloria, sola Dei Gloria, as opposed to ascribing glory to various saints of the church. I'd observe that none of these solas, none of these uh, scripture alone, faith alone, Christ alone, grace alone, God's glory alone, are quite as simple as they For example, different people can and do read scripture alone and come to nearly opposite conclusions on what that scripture tells them, that that would be a reason for the ever prolifer the, the great prolifer proliferation of different denominations. People read the same scripture and came to different conclusions. And faith, the, the phrase faith alone has often been corrupted to support an overly spiritualized reliance on, on creedal or find it as to be of no earthly good. But these five also guarded the church against corrupting influence, as in Hitler's Germany, when the confessing church's embrace of Christ alone left no room for veneration of Hitler, as opposed to the so-called German. Of course, as the result of succeeding denominational mergers, we at Emmanuel Church are part of the United Church of Christ, where varying theologies are welcome and great. Since most United Church of Christ congregations in our area tradition the five solas continue to live on as a distinctive contribution of the Reformed tradition. Another distinctive part of our theological heritage is the Heidelberg Catholic the UCC, but very much a part of our German Reform. The first question is, what, and this is probably something our, our, law, our most longtime members uh, memorize as part, of their as part of their confirmation class, what is your only comfort in life and in death? The answer is quite long, body and soul, in life and in death, not to myself, but to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. The, that, that question and that answer, some see almost as a summation of everything that follows. And so the, the answer to that question, go on from there. Earlier, I spoke of the tragedies that came out of the Reformation. Of course, there have been many positive consequences as well. Various groups of reformers were excommunicated by Rome. These groups, in effect, became laboratories of faith in which and theories of church governance could be put into action and the consequences observed. And so some churches of the Reformation were, 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 governed, by, were governed by bishops, but separate from Rome. Some were governed by... Uh, by synods, by consistories, different, you know, different, uh, different councils, um, many different kinds of church government governance. Uh, some are born, uh, the the uh, New England Puritans and Pilgrims were on a congregational basis, where the congregation itself uh, made, made decisions, and the Roman Catholic Church itself changed in response to the ideas of the reformers. Vatican II, the Second Vatican Council, initiated by Pope John XXIII in the early 1960s, brought changes to the Roman Catholic Church at least as radical as anything the Reformers could have envisioned, if not more so. Meanwhile, in the 20th century, many Protestant groups saw a need to work toward mutual understanding and cooperation, and the ecumenical movement was born, including our own Bridesburg Council of Churches. We are a church, it's usually a Latin phrase, semper reformanda, a church always reforming, a church always in need of further reformation. The United Church of Christ in particular looks to a phrase offered by Puritan John, Cal by Puritan John Robinson, John Robinson, that's part of the congregational side of the UCC, 
Uh, John Robinson lamented those of his time who could not go beyond what Luther and Calvin taught. And so he, and so he, he taught, there is yet more light and truth to break forth from God's holy word. The United Church of Christ has encapsulated this in the phrase, God is still speaking. Uh, another phrase popular in the UCC is, is uh, to, to don't, put a, don't put a period where God has put only a comma. Of course, the flip side of God is still speaking is, is that God's people must still be listening. We all live and work toward a future, if not for ourselves, for our children and grandchildren, or for society at large. Like Moses, we, we may envision a future we never fully live to experience. It's the human condition. In one of his last speeches, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, perhaps foreseeing his own assassination, said that while he might not get there himself, he had seen the promised land of racial justice and equality. And I believe each of us has a spiritual vision of a, of a promised land that we may envision but never fully inhabit, this side of the grave. Ultimately, life is not a marathon, but it is a relay race. We are handed the baton by those who go before us. We run our part of the race, and then we pass the baton to those who go after us, just as Moses carried the baton, the baton of leading the people of Israel and then passed it to Joshua. Our task is to run our part of the race in faith, trusting God for the outcome of the whole race. Moses died on Mount Nebo, granted a vision for his people that he could see but not inhabit. God grants each of us a vision as well, a flame that burns within us, lighting the path for our days. I'll close with quotes from two different traditions that I hope will help keep that flame within us burning, especially in these very difficult days. First, from Bridges McCall, drawing on the Jewish faith. The Talmud states, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justice now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work but neither are you free to abandon it. And secondly, and finally, uh, from our own tradition, uh, American Reformed Christian theologian Reinhold Niebuhr, nothing that is worth doing can be achieved in our lifetime. Therefore, we must be saved by hope. Nothing which is true or beautiful or good makes complete sense in any immediate context of history. Therefore, we must be saved by faith. Nothing we do, however virtuous, can be accomplished alone. Therefore, we must be saved by love. No virtuous act is quite as virtuous from the standpoint of our friend or foe as it is from our standpoint. Therefore, we must be saved by the final form of love, which is forgiveness. Amen. Please join me in praying in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth from this spiritual sanctuary. Go forth from your homes into the coming week to love and serve the Lord. Go forth from this spiritual house of worship. Go forth from 
your homes, go forth into the coming week in peace to love and serve all to whom God has called us in service. Go forth knowing that you are part of a long line of the faithful who have run the relay race of faith through many, through many ages. Go forth to carry, your, to carry the baton for your part of the race faithfully. And as you go forth, may the, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us and go with us each one now and evermore. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Our final hymn is number 287, God of Grace and God of Glory. Crown thine ancient church's story, bring her but to glorious floor. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Lo, the hosts of evil round us scorn thy Christ, assail his ways. From the fears that long have bound us, free our hearts to faith and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, for the living of these days. Cure thy children's warring madness, bend our pride to thy control. Shame our wanton, selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Set our feet on lofty places, gird our lives that they may be armored with all Christ like graces in the fight to set men free. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, that we fail not man nor thee.